welcome to Josh's House of Nerd podcast. Hi everybody and welcome to Josh's House of Nerd once again for a TV review. And tonight I'm going to be reviewing Unscripted, that 90s show that just came out on Netflix this week. And I'm going to be honest with you, it's something that I have been really looking forward to. It's something that, um, I don't know, I, I kind of felt like I really wanted a TV show like that. And I wanted to kind of uh, give you my thoughts about it. I literally just stopped watching it like 10 minutes ago. And I want to kind of give you the goods and the bads and, um, and then kind of hopefully that'll guide you. Uh, into finding this show um, on Netflix. Um, let's talk about the goods. All right, the goods. Pretty much um, right from the get go, um, it was really nice in the even just the very first episode. Uh, once I started binging it two days ago, of uh, Rhett and uh, Red and Kitty, and it seemed like almost every scene that they were in, it just felt like the old that 70s show they were awesome i feel like they were back you know like they say in the the move in the previews to it they're back baby and i truly believe that i truly believe that a red and kitty um are back in this they completely show us that they can get back into form, and it feels like that nine or that '70s show never stopped when it came to them. Um, a couple of the other things that I really well, okay, let me keep going with Red and Kitty. They, I felt like they, I mean, the episode, this, the series is a lot more about them. You know, they are very much more in the forefront. If you guys kind of remember that '70s show in kind of the later seasons. Once Eric Foreman left, you know, once Topher Grace left, Grace left the show, you know, you saw a lot more uh, Red and Kitty. Um, they were even in the opening credits, um, things like that. And they were they were pretty good. And that was some of the, the best parts of, you know, um, that last year of that 70s show. And I would say that they are some of the best things about that 90s show, without a doubt. And I know that was on purpose, okay? Um... You know, they definitely stole all the scenes they were in. Um, just, just hit it out of the park. You know, I could probably sit here and gush and gush about them, um, as you can tell. Um, the other good things, um, the cameos were good, and we'll come back to the cameos in a second because I've got some goods and some bad things about the cameos. Uh, Wilmer Valderrama, uh, uh, Wilmer Valderrama, sorry, um, was awesome as Fez. He came back into the show. Um, I thought his parts um, was really good. He, he, I feel like he fell right back into the character. His, uh, the, the way that he's kind of come about in the future, I thought was just perfect for Fez, um, being a hairdresser, um, and then being the kind of the you know boy toy of the next door neighbor. Um, I think that he fit in really good. Um, now let's get back. You know, let's go talk about Ashton Kutcher and Mila. Um, uh, why do I want to say one Mila Jojovich? I almost said that. Um, Mila Kunis. Um, I wish they'd been in it more. They were in... I can't remember if it was the first episode or the second episode. Uh, it was a couple days ago. And I... It was really good to see them. And it was really fun to see their characters come in and kind of introduce their... Uh, Kelso's son um, in, in the show. And he did the damn Jackie... Uh, you know, uh, whole thing. And then that was it. That was it, you know? Um, so, you know, I wish there was, I, you know, I really liked what they did. I wish there was more of them. I, okay, so I guess I'm talking about some of the pros already. Um, I wish there was pros about, um, or there was more of them. Um, there was just so little of them in the very first episode. I think it was all of about one, maybe two minutes of them on screen. Uh, and then that was it. They did come back in their, uh, they did act really well. They did bring their parts back. Uh, it did feel like them again, but they just wasn't there long enough. I wanted more. Um, you know, so uh, Wilmer Valderrama, I think, did good. We got plenty of him. Plenty of him throughout the episodes in the very beginning and, and towards the, the last couple of episodes. Tons of him. Um, 
Topher Grace, he was in the first episode uh, where they dropped their daughter off with uh, uh, Donna. Okay, I'm totally blanking on her name. Uh, but um, maybe I'll remember to put it down below what her name is that played Donna. Oh my goodness, why am I blanking on her name? Yeah, classic for uh, unscripted, right? Um, anyways, I thought she was great and, and she was in it quite a bit. Um, you know, playing the mom of Leia, of course. Um, and it was really nice seeing her. She was in it, um, here and there throughout the entire, uh, series. And I, it was really good to see her. Now, the cons to that was in a lot of the scenes, she wasn't necessarily like a main part of the scene. You know, she didn't have a lot of like speaking parts and it felt like her dialogue was a lot of really short, you know, kind of short bursts, but um not a lot to talk about i wish there was more i wish there would been more of a little bit more in-depth plot with her use her i feel like they didn't use her very effectively um even though it was really good to see her um so you know of course we never saw steven you know uh since he his uh the actor who plays him again totally spacing his name great this is a great one for youtube right uh, forgetting all the actors' names. Uh, Danny Masterson, great. I can remember Danny Masterson's name, but I can't remember the one for Donna. Great. Anyways, um, so um, they didn't bring up Danny Masterson's character, Steven, at all. Uh, completely, totally forgotten about. Uh, even in a flashback at the very end where they show them around the table, uh, where Fez's character shows uh, Eric, Donna, um, and Kelso around the table, but they they cut out Danny Masterson. So I know he's going through a lot. I know he's going through a lot of bad stuff. And you know, um, even though you know he was in the original one, it, you know, it, it's weird to say that you know he should be in there, but it's also weird to say he sh he shouldn't be in there. Um, he he was accused of some bad crap, and it hasn't been proven. But you know, still. Um, you know, it's it's kind of a, a tentative thing. So I understand why they left him out because of the things he was accused of. So you know, that's kind of my um, my you know so far that, that was that's kind of my take on it. They brought back Donna's dad. That was actually pretty funny. They brought back Chong, uh, Tommy Chong uh, as Leo. Um, they brought back Fez's nemesis, which I just his last name his name just went out of my head. Uh, that you know his nemesis. I think it was in the last season or last two seasons um fez's nemesis uh which i thought was pretty good as the landlord of his girlfriend let me talk about his girlfriend who is also the mom of two of the kids characters and she's also red's next door neighbor um i feel like she was used a lot i feel like i don't know i feel like she was a little forced um she she had some funny parts she almost kind of reminded me of the Lori character uh from that 70s show, you know, the daughter character. Um, yeah, you know, kind of trashy, yet sometimes redeeming, sometimes, you know. Um, you know, she was a love interest of Fez in it. So, I mean, she was kind of, you know, got less trashy over the, the series. I don't know. I just feel like she, she was maybe used a little bit too much in the storyline. I'm not sure. I don't have anything to say of the, how, how it would be different. Uh, how they could have used her differently. I just it just felt a little forced and kind of a little out there how she just kind of inserted herself into the lives of Red and Kitty. Um, go oh one one more thing being unscripted. But going talking about Topher Grace. Um, also, I wish he'd be in it. I wish he had been in it a little bit more than that first episode. So I'll leave you at that. Um, Let's see. So for, you know, the snippets here and there of cameos, I really liked it. Now go into the kids. Here's my cons. Okay. So there's almost my, those are my pros. Um, you know, there were some funny, definitely some funny scenes throughout the, the episode. My cons are there wasn't enough funny things in there. It felt like when it was focusing on the kids, it felt kind of flat. Uh, the actors i don't know i don't know if they felt like they they the ones from that 70s show they felt more real 
I think that's a better way to put it. And I don't want to be mean here because they did a fine job. They really did. Um, I don't know if it was the writing. I don't know if it was uh, because it was all of them. They kind of, the interaction with them felt um, like it just didn't flow very well. Um, a lot of the dialogue felt forced. A lot of the dialogue uh, just wasn't funny. You know, they were trying to be funny. Um, and it just wasn't there. Um, you know, a few of the characters were kind of um, annoying a little bit. You know, um, Ozzy, the, that character, he was uh, a little annoying sometimes. Um, underused. Um, I, it felt like he was kind of an afterthought. Um, I wish that they would use his part a little bit differently. Um, uh, I think it could have been a funnier character. I, I know they were going for funny, and they tried. They really tried. Um, I think the actor did a good job, but um, I think, you know, they could utilize that character a little bit more. He just felt like he was in the background more than anything. Kind of a side character, um, you know, be, you know, uh, with all the rest of the couples going on and, and stuff like that. Um, they could have used him a little bit more um, and toned down the annoying a little bit. Um, and then um, and then I think he'd be a great character. And then the the other couples, it kind of felt like um, there was the Kel the son the son that's a Kelso, and then there was the brother of um, the next door or the son of the next door neighbor, who was also the brother of one of the other girl characters. Um, he almost felt like a Kelso too. It was almost like there was two um, two uh, uh, two Kelsos. Yeah. It kind of felt that way, you know, kind of, uh, the actual Kelso wasn't that, wasn't dumb like, like his dad was, kind of, and the one that's the brother of the other character, who's his best friend, also, he felt a little kind of dumb, dumber, he almost felt more Kelso than the actual Kelso character, so, and then, uh, let's go to, let's talk about, um, Leia, the main character, uh, uh, Eric and Donna's daughter. Um, I thought it was funny that they still went with the theme that Eric was a professor of Star Wars. I, that is a pro, definitely. Um, I I love that they named her Leia. I think that's a kind of a, that's definitely a throwback. I think to that '70s show. He I think he says that in that '70s show. Um, so you know, I I really liked those things. Um, Leia was a fun character. Um, Though, again, the interaction with her and the friends, kind of annoying sometimes. Um, I know they were trying to play her as naive, and sometimes that just went a little bit too far um, with her trying to, you know, come of age and stuff like that. I, I wish they would have done that a little more. I don't know. Again, I don't know if it was rioting or the acting. Um, again, it just felt flat, felt forced. I'm, I'm thinking more of possibly the writing just because of the, um, the, they all felt that way except for red, mostly red and kitty and, and the, uh, cameos. So I would, I would definitely, I think she's a good pick for the actors. I actually think all of them are good pick for the actors and actresses. I just wish that, uh, the dialogue wasn't so flat and, and that they just intermixed a little bit better. Um, felt very amateurish at times, um, with the, with the acting. And maybe that's just because of a, the contrast of Red and Kitty's characters of being just so on point and so, you know, so good. I'm not saying they were perfect, but, you know, they were so good. Um, and, and really, you know, again, being them. Um, back in the flesh again. So, overall, if I, you know, I, I would I would definitely recommend this. If you guys are, are really big fans of that 70s show i i actually enjoyed it i did feel myself maybe kind of like come on get get on with some things maybe it was you know again not that exciting i didn't find myself laughing as much as i thought it would but there was definitely points in time where i did laugh and i think the nostalgia in it definitely helped it along and carried it forward which in my mind made it work and, and i'm gonna have to give kudos to the actors in the kids maybe the, the writing wasn't on point the comedy maybe wasn't on point but i did notice that as the as the episodes went on 
that they seem to kind of get more into their groove uh, the further and further they went. And a little bit more, you can know, they gelled. And it seemed like the writing maybe gelled a little bit more too. So, um, so but there was a couple of times I did laugh out loud. I thought it was pretty funny. Um, so I would say, I would recommend this. Now, don't go into it thinking this is going to be that 70s show. It's not that 70s show. It, it doesn't feel as authentic being in the 90s. It does, they're really trying to push the 90s theme, but it doesn't feel as authentic 90s as I felt like that 70s show felt authentic 70s, even though I really don't remember the 70s that much since I was like born in 77. Um, but overall, you know, they really tried to inject the 90s in there. I thought it was really funny. The episode where Kitty and uh, Red uh, were, got a new computer. That was hilarious. They got online. That was hilarious. That episode was pretty funny. Uh, with Ozzy showing them showing them how to use a computer and him trying to come in, come out to them that was pretty funny so I, I did enjoy that episode there was funny little snippets like that you know getting online things like that but um, you know there's lots of high points lots of low points and uh, but I, I feel like it's a good watch I feel like you know you if, if you're a fan of it then definitely give this a try and just know there's going to be flaws. It's not exa it's not that 70s show. It's it's definitely that 90s show. And I'm hoping, okay, here's my hope. I hope that it comes back for a second season and gets more into its groove than even this one. Because again, towards the end, it, I felt like it was starting to get into its groove. Um, and I hope the writing gets stronger. I hope the acting gels more. I hope it all gets better. Because you know what? Let's just flat out say it. I love that 70s show. I do. I love that 70s show. And I want that 90s show to work. I want it to be good. I want more Red and K Kitty. And I want more cameos. I want more of it all. And I just want it to be... I just want it to step up a level. So, if I had to give this a grade, I would probably give it a B-. And stuff. Lots of high points lots of low points and uh so anyways that's my evaluation kind of shooting from the hip of that 90s show give it a watch let me think let me know what you think about the characters let me know what you think of the storyline let me know what you think about the actors and the writing and all that stuff i'd really like to know um were there act, actor or were there parts that you liked more were there characters that you wish would they would change a little bit different that they would have treated a little bit more differently that they would have put more to the front a little bit more um let me know i'd like to hear i'd like to know your comments you know um but overall i i i, I don't regret watching it i enjoyed it and uh, that's what i have to say so thank you for listening to my rant my unscripted rant and as always may you be excellent to each other and live long and prosper from all of us here at josh's house and earth have a good day. Thanks for watching. For more nerdy awesomeness, please like and subscribe and check out our other nerdy videos.